Hi there, my name's Colin and this is the Action Figure Resource, the place for all your action figure news, reviews, tutorials and guides. Today I'm going to be talking about the COO of an action figure, what it means, how relevant it is and the importance of it to your vintage action figures and their values, particularly when we're talking about the vintage Star Wars line. So, what does COO mean? What is its importance? And how does it affect your figures? For the sake of this video, I'm going to be referencing the vintage Star Wars figures. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures. The term COO is short for Country of Origin. It is mostly used to specify the country mark, but the term can also be used to talk about all the information on the figure. The COO has three main components. The copyright, the year, and the country. Let's take a look at the copyright. The copyright usually comes first with the small c within a circle. On the vintage Star Wars figures, it is followed by one of three different abbreviations. GMFGI for General Mills Fun Group Inc. CPG, Consumer Product Group, or LFL, Lucas Film Limited. The GMFGI was used for the first 20 figures. CPG was only used for the Bob Effect figure and LFL for all other figures except the R2-D2 sensor scope Empire Strikes Back figure because the mould of the early R2-D2 solid drone was used for this figure. Next we have the year. The year is normally directly placed behind the copyright. In this case the year indicates when the copyright was acquired for the character not when the character was made. It is often said misleadingly that this is the year that the figure was produced, which quite simply is wrong, because they didn't change the mould every year while producing the figure. So it refers to when the copyright to produce the figure was first acquired. This also explains why the R2-D2 with pop-up Sabre is marked with 1977 copyright, although he was not produced before 1985. The year also indicates the time frame beginning with the production of a character in his original form because that simply goes together with acquiring the copyright. Of course, also in this case, there is some exception. For example, the Brazilian R2-D2 with 1985 on it, or the Barada that exists with 1984 as well as 1985 date stamps. I would also like to mention the R5-D4, which, was, which has 1977 marks and 1978 stamps on it, because the mould from the R2-D2 was used for the 1977 marked ones, and the COO was not altered in this case. Next is the country stamp. The country marks indicate where the figure was produced, which means where the plastic 
was injected or poured into the steel mould. This does not indicate where it was finally assembled, painted or packed, which could differ from its actual country mark. For example, many of the figures carded in Spain were bought and ordered and then assembled in Spain, not in the country it was stamped. From time to time, production location was changed for several reasons. For example, to lower costs, rising production numbers, etc. In these situations, the moulds were normally altered and the country marks were changed. In the later period of production, this all got messed up and the no COO figures, meaning no country marks, were born. I think Kenner realised it was simpler to just stamp the locations on the card backs than to change the moulds every now and again when production was changed to another country. The first production location was for sure Hong Kong. There are many controversial opinions as to what happened next. Taiwan COOs can appear on a New Hope characters and Return of the Jedi characters, but not a single Empire Strikes Back character. There are two facts about the Taiwan COOs. The first is that these are not altered moulds. They belong to the original stamped ones and already appeared on the Star Wars 12 back cards. For example, Luke Skywalker. And the second is they were never changed into a no COO. Regarding this, we probably can say the Taiwan steel modes were produced for Taiwan and stayed in Taiwan, while the Hong Kong steel moulds made their way to China and Macau, where some of them were altered. Also, the way the stamps were altered can differ heavily, and I will try to give an overview which can never be 100% accurate because of exceptions. Okay, so first we have the Hong Kong stamps. Figures produced in Hong Kong were stamped either made in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, or simply HK. These were normally the unaltered steel moulds. So they are called original COOs. Two, the Taiwan mould. These were stamped made in Taiwan or Taiwan. These are unaltered COOs and also belong to the original COOs. Next are the Macau stamps. Figures were stamped either Macau, spelt M-A-C-A-U, or M-A-C-A-O, or the country was deleted completely, making it a no C-O-O stamp. These are altered Hong Kong C-O-Os. These were stamped either made in China or China, always on a raised bar. Also, the blank raised bars and other no COOs can be Chinese produced figures. These are all altered Hong Kong COOs. And lastly, we have the no COO stamped figures. Figures with no country stamped on them can be produced as they were or produced in altered moulds where the country was deleted. The method used to delete them is no proof of the country where they were produced. There are several terms used in order to describe how the country mark was deleted. 
which tend to describe how the marking appeared rather than what was done to the mould. The first term is smooth deleted COO. This describes where the country is not visible and the place where it should be looks smooth. The area around the former stamp is on the same height level. This means the letters in the mould were filled up and precisely smooth. The second term used to describe this process is the melted down COO. This normally describes where the country code is still slightly visible but mostly looks melted out. This term is also used for smooth deleted COOs. The problem is deciding which is which. The melted down ones always have a little rampart and some letters can still be slightly visible. In this case, the COO was scratched out in the mold and smoothed over. The next term is the scarred out COO. This normally means that the figure always has a deep scar where the country name formerly was. The scars look like someone has removed COO with a soldering iron or similar. In fact, the COO was actually filled up with a kind of lead tin mixture in the area on the mould. Fourth, we have the blank raised bar COO. This is the easiest one to spot. The COO was just drilled out. This can be used to leave it blank or place another COO on top of it. There are some further points to bear in mind with the scarred out COO. This is the only one which is roughly done and with lots of additional material on top of the former COO. That is the reason why the look of these can change while producing them in high numbers. The fact is that these fillets can change or become damaged fully or partially because of wear on the mould. A famous example is the half scarred snaggle tooth figure. It seems clear that half of the scar broke off while producing full scarred figures. Lots of them were produced and this mistake wasn't fixed or wasn't changed, probably because it was not noticed within the busy factory. That is why there are quite a few of them in existence. In the case of the Lando Bespin scar, it is difficult to be sure what happened exactly. There are lots of different scars known. On some scars, even single letters can be seen. The fact is, the Lando is one of the more common scarred figures and there was not only one mould used to produce them. However, regarding other scarred out figures, we can assume that there were two to four different scarred out moulds. In most cases, two different scars are known on the Greedo, Attack Commander, Biker Scout, etc. But there is a real large number of Lando scars existing. The only way to explain this is that the fillets often broke out, or in the case often were repaired or the Phillips were renewed. This is just a theory, but it makes the most sense. Also, the many different types or styles of scars are probably due to the gradual wearing out of the tin or lead-like material used to fill it in. Probably about the only safe thing to say about most of the COO figures is one, that the first 20 figures were produced in Hong Kong from original steel mould that were unaltered with the GMFGI copyrights with a 1977 date and either made in Hong Kong, Hong Kong or HK for the country stamp. Any other figures is just general speculation as the country stamp 
only proves where the plastic was injected into the mould and not necessarily where the figure was assembled, painted and packed. If you find this information fascinating and want to take a deeper dive into the COO origins, the error COOs and the different altered COOs, please see the link in my description box below. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.